Hey, welcome to AI Late to Class. I'm going to do something different today. I'm going to go over Hugging Face Spaces of the Week. So not necessarily their spaces of the week, but ones that I've chosen. I probably won't do this every week. Just now and then, just to catch up on some of the great things that have happened on Hugging Face. But anyway, today's one, we're going to look at IC Custom first, where you put in this necklace here or any other sort of product and use a mask and you go through the process and then it joins it up with a bit of a prompt. I'm going to go on to Uso Flux. Uh, I will also show this in Comp for UI and the workflow will be in the comments where you use an image, put a style and out blends the two together. I'll go through Hoon Young Video Foley. So this one where you put in your video and it'll add sound to it. Probably better than MM Audio or Think Sound. Another one, consistent character. So upload our photo and do our prompt and out it comes. And I'll go over Instant Style here, which is an older one. And see what the difference is between that and the other. I will also go through Stable Diffusion 1.5. And look at the IP adapter as far as the face ID to see how these new ones such as the Uso Flux and the instant style and the consistent character. So if you want to do stuff for free and you haven't got the greatest computer, then this is the episode for you. Firstly, I want to go over Hongi Yang Video Foley. So just upload your video. And in this case, the prompt is a cat walks in a field of grass with the atmosphere, birds, insects and wind. And this is what it came out with. Yeah, it's okay. There's quite a few examples here. You can change the CFG and steps to try and get something different out of it. And come down here, let's just try and load in another sample here. This one's got a longer prompt here and it does have beautiful serene piano solo with hint of classical charm. So let's listen to that. So that's really good. The most impressive thing with this is its accuracy when things happen in the video. So let's watch this with the splash. Right, so there is a Comfy UI node for this if you want to try and get this going in comp UI. in fact there's a few of them i'll put the links in the comments to that next i want to look at consistent character and i came across this consistent character workflow that came out quite good it keeps this face this was an ai generated face and whisk and it's kept this guy's face quite well so i want to just try a few tests with this in queen context and nano banana stable diffusion i just want to see what different results i can get so google nano banana did quite a good job with this just changed the suit didn't really do anything else queen image edit on hugging face did a really good job as well and here is flux context version of the hugging face flux context space I just want to show Stable Diffusion 1.5 with the IP adapter and Face ID. I don't want to talk about the Excel version as I think it came out too plasticky, but this is more like the consistent character one we've got back here where it actually takes the guy and puts him in different poses and places. And that's what I like about this Stable Diffusion one. We're not just got him changing the outfit. It's actually got him in different angles and stuff. So when we change our prompt, we'll see how that gives us different results and why would you use stable diffusion and the consistent character over using google um, nano banana queen or flux context so consistent character is limited by this drop down box you can only choose things from here which is unfortunate because it actually does a good job of facial structure even though we've done something completely off tangent here it's kept that facial structure really good and the photographic quality is really good. Now trying this in Google AI Studio, Google Nano Banana cannot be tricked. So as the woman is wearing a dress as my prompt and then it just goes, got it, here is the woman wearing a red dress and just gives some random woman. It 
when you prompt for the men to be wearing a red dress, then it just changes that. It doesn't change anything else in the image. Everything else stays exactly the same. In Flux context, the man is wearing a red cocktail dress. It didn't really get the prompt at all. Queen image edit bringing in a whole new person altogether, so not keeping any facial structure at all. Back in Stable Diffusion, I've got the prompt here, a woman wearing a red cocktail dress. So now, with that image, we can see that there is definitely the same facial structure, but lots and lots of changes. There's feminization and all sorts of stuff. It's just completely adjusted it compared to the prompt. So if we have a character and we want them to be in different scenarios in a film and we want to change the way they look and that, this is probably a really good product that we can make changes to. And I still don't know any new product that can keep that facial structure and make those changes. So halfway through making this video, this happened. Sea Dream 4 has just been dropped. Everything I've been saying about doing the image editing with uh, Nano Banana, Flux Context and Queen Image Edit and how we couldn't get things to change much of the character. We can get parts of their, like their clothes to change and things like that. And we can get slight body movements but not an all over movement of the character of, for consistency. And Stable Diffusion 1.5 had that sort of changes, kept the facial structure well, this Sea Dream 4 is doing all of those things. Looking at the examples here, you can see how they've got this girl in 360 degree overhead view. We can see the changes here. From behind, everything looks like it's part of the same scene. Let's have a look at this next one. Got this logo here, and we've got it on, it says bags, hats, cards, wristbands, and look what it does. Got this character here, showing different sports will be used to code a series of advertisements, right? Keep the same figure's silhouette in the background for that. We've got this one here. And let's have a look at that. Now look at the prompt editing. Here's a showcase of its styles. And knowledge driven generation. So you can see this math here. The only other thing that could probably do that really well would be Google Nano Banana. But it just has all of these that the words are just so accurate on this. I've never seen anything this good. On this website, you can actually scroll down and have a look at the benchmarks there. Um, it's got the others down the bottom. You can see the graph there. You've also got these here. You might want to just move your mouse over and have a look at the difference that it's got there. I've got this user guide. I'll have it linked in the comments, so I won't go too far into it, but you can see it could be quite helpful when you want to try and generate your prompts. Here's my Garvit over on Glyph. I've got the prompt, make the man wearing a suit and standing in front of a Ferrari. As you can see, unlike the others, it has actually changed the whole concept of him, not just changed his clothes, and it has kept that facial structure good, but not made him exactly the same, but it could be the same guy. So this is really good. Glyph has all changed now since I did a tutorial on it before. This time, instead of clicking build, we'll go into skills, and there's a whole lot of templates there. We're going to type up here, see dream, and up here, there's the virtual close try on thing. There's generate just a normal image, manipulate two images, manipulate image with see dream four. So we probably want to go with this one. And in here, we're going to upload our image. And we just type in our prompt here and click run. That's as easy as that. Back to my spaces of the week. I see custom. This website's a little bit slow. Um, it's like the place it here one where I put the watch on the woman's arm. Same sort of thing. Upload your item there. And probably prefer if it's on a white background. Upload your image and in here you use over here use your mask and draw where you want it to be. 
Underneath, there's a prompt. Woman wearing gold necklace. And then you go over here, click generate. And that's the final result. This is a good result when you don't have the software installed and you want to do something really quick. Before I go on to the last hugging face, Uzo Flux, I'm going to go back and look at Instant Style, which is an old one now, but still very unique and it works better in different circumstances than using something like Uzo Flux. So I've got this image that's quite unique and I'll come down here and I've uploaded that same guy again. You do have some conditioning you can play with to try and get it more like the original image. I just left it on the default and that's what it came out with. But I'm actually getting better results out of this than Uso Flux. So it's definitely worth using now and then for the purpose. Now you can install that into Comfy. I'm not going to show that. It's probably easier if you use something like Pinocchio. It's on that list there. So you can just click on it and it'll do the install for you. So this is Uso Flux. This is the latest styler. So I've got that guy and I've got my style image. I didn't do a second style image. And we can come down here and you've got guidance and that. I have played with that, but I just left on the default because I didn't get good results playing around with that. Down the bottom, there's a lot of samples that you can try. And good to try these ones with the two styles on there just to see the mashup that it does. And muck around with your prompt a bit. See if that changes things. I did that and it came out with different looks again. So there's a lot you can do with this. This is the Comfy UI version of Flux Uso. I got this from ComfyUI.org. Their version seemed to be missing this VAE, so I clicked that up, and it was missing the clip files there as well, so it wasn't going to work without those. So I'll have these in the comments, but if you've done this in Flux before, you'll know about the Clip L and the T5XXL Safe Tensor, and you know about the AE Safe Tensor. But anyway, if you look over the list onto the side there, you can see it tells you what folders they all need to go in. The one that you're probably not used to is that model patches folder over here. And you can see it's got Uso Flux um, Projector V1. That one, make sure that that's in there. And this Clip Vision, you may not have the SIG Clip Vision. I've had it from before. But if you don't have that, that goes in there and just follow those instructions where things need to go. The workflow is not much different than anything else, and you just upload your image there and the style over there. I'm just going to keep this simple just so it doesn't change much, and just write our man. There's our result from that. It did its own thing with the circle here and this other bit around the outside. I guess it was sort of interpreting those branches as something like that, but... It did get close to the style, so it's useful for some things. I mean, in general, you've probably got a lot of Lauras that you just use instead and use that, but when there's a particular style there's not a Laura for, this can be quite helpful. I've used this and I've prompted it with a style inside, or you could add in other Lauras as well. So there's lots of things you can do with this, but it could uh, deteriorate the image. There's a little bit of quality loss with this here and I've noticed that with the Stable Diffusion XL when I apply styles too sometimes you get some deterioration. Anyway that's the end of this episode. Get an account at Hugging Face because there's some spaces that won't let you generate without an account. Hope there's something there for everyone today. Buy me a coffee, subscribe, like and we'll see you in the next episode.